thanks for attending our talk. Uh, today we will share about how we exploit the Qualcomm WLAN and the modem over the, way, over the air and finally compromise the Linux kernel. Uh, about us, uh, we are the uh, security researchers from Tencent Blade team. Uh, Tencent Blade team uh, is founded by Tencent Security Platform Department in 2017. Uh, we focus on uh, security research in the areas of AIoT, mobile devices, cloud visualization, blockchain, and uh, ETC. <coughs> uh, this is the agenda. Uh, firstly, we will introduce some uh, related works. Uh, we know that uh, WLAN security is a hot topic in recent years. Uh, the known exploit on Broadcom Wi Fi ship is on 2017 and this year on Mawa. Today our talk is about Qualcomm. As we know, uh, there is no public e exploit on Qualcomm Wi-Fi ships, so how secure uh, is the common, uh, Qualcomm Wi-Fi? There is a simple uh, illustration about the architecture of Qualcomm, Qualcomm Wi-Fi. Uh, there are two important things. Uh, the first one uh, is that uh, start from Snapdragon 835. The WLAN firmware is integrated into the baseband subsystem, so the WLAN and the modem firmware are run in the same processor now. The second thing is that you can see uh, in Qualcomm's uh, implementation, most of the function there is implemented in the Linux kernel driver named QCACLD. Uh, there are plenty of vulnerabilities in this driver. Uh, that is the well known WLAN host. Vulnerabilities. Our talk is not about the WLAN host issues. It is about the WLAN firmware itself. Uh, we know that uh, there is no public talk on the Qualcomm WLAN firmware previously. So, how about the security status? Uh, we will answer this question. Before we go into the details of WLAN and, f and modern firmware, we need to introduce the debugger we use to debug the firmware. This is the key step for us to analyze the modern and WLAN. Uh, there are a modern boot authenticator and the modern images in file system. You can see uh, MBA.MBN is the MBA image. Modem.mdt and modem.bxx are modem images. These images have a specific format according to Qualcomm's official document. Like uh, application processor, modem processor also has its secure boot flow. The flow is like this. Uh, firstly, Linux kernel will load MBA and uh, modem images from file system to physical memory. The second, uh, Linux kernel will set the start physical address of MBA and uh, reset the modern processor. Modern PBL in ROM will verify the MBA image. If success, it will jump to the MBA code. Finally, MBA will read and verify modern images. If, if success, it will jump to the modern main code. Uh, the Peer boot function in Linux kernel describes the boot flow of modem. Uh, it will load uh, mo MBA and modem images to physical memory and then check MBA and modem images to be verified and executed in modem processor. Linux kernel can restart modem processor at, at any time and it will hit uh, peer boot function each time when restart. Uh, the vulnerability we use to bypass uh, the modern uh, secure boot is a time of check, time of use bug. When MBA verifying modern images, it doesn't lock the physical mem memory region. Means that Linux kernel still can modify the modern images. So after MBA verified one image, Linux kernel can still modify it, which means that we have bypassed the secure boot check. Uh, the POC for the vulnerability is quite simple. There is the uh, diff, diff file of peer boot function. We just let the uh, peer reclaim mem function after we modify modem images. Uh, after we have ability to modify the modem images, we can inject debug server to modem side. 
uh, we injected a demonstrator to wait for commands from Linux side. The commands and the resu results will be exchanged using shared physical memory. Uh, we now can uh, issue debug commands to debug WLAN and the modern firmware. Uh, now we have the uh, debugger. We can analyze the modem and WLAN firmware much easier. And uh, Xilin will introduce the following details. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to introduce the reverse engineering and the vulnerability and the exploitation of WLAN. And uh, finally, we'll get into the Linux kernel. Okay. Let's we use the architecture of Qualcomm WLAN. Uh, the WLAN is now in the baseband subsystem and uh, is hexagon architecture, uh, not ARM architecture, it's hexagon architecture. So we can analyze it uh, and uh, if we control the WLAN, we have actually controlled the baseband sub subsystem. Okay. Uh, here is a simple figure for the WLAN architecture. Uh, from the fig, we can see that the Qualcomm WLAN is not a full mark like firmware. Most of the function of w WLAN are implemented in the Linux driver. You can see here in the QCAC driver. Okay. That's leading to a smaller attack surface than the other vendors. The work to be done here in the firmware is called the offload. You see the offload MAC layer. Uh, the major attack surface is here in the offload handler. The offload handler is actually uh, a table, a function table. It will inspect the OTA packet and if interested in, we will pass the packet and do, and do some job. So the attack could happen here uh, when the offload handler handles the packet. So we can and analysis, okay? Give an example for how the Wi-Fi access point is displayed on the Wi-Fi list. So if you uh, turn on the UI and the setting and open the Wi-Fi, you will see a list of the access point, okay? Actually, when you turn, turn on the Wi-Fi, the Android framework will issue command to the driver and the driver will command the firmware to scan the nearby Wi-Fi hotspot. Finally, the firmware will register two, 200 into the handler table. When the other hotspot or access point send a packet, yes, if you have a uh, access point, it will send out beacons and the other packages. So our handler will receive receive the data and pass it. If into the management become, it will transfer it into the driver and finally we will notify the um, user space application so that you can see the SSID and uh, other information. Okay. Okay. So now we have some basic things about Qualcomm uh, WLAN. Uh, let's start the reverse engineering. Uh, this is the firmware loaded by modern. Uh, this is the WLAN firmware. It will load by modern from this position, and this is the disassembler. And this is the wonderful SDK provided by Qualcomm and uh, instruction reference for the hexagon architecture. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the WLAN firmware has more than 8,000 functions. It's a difficult task to reverse these functions without any knowledge. Uh, luckily, Qualcomm have given us some hint. You can see the most useful thing is the string table. Uh, we can find a lot of function names. And uh, the other thing is the import function. Because the WLAN firmware is load, loaded by the modern as a shared library. So the WLAN use, use a lot of functions from the modern and they leave the function names in the input function table. They are quite useful, the string table and the input function. Okay. The target we are going to reverse engineering is the offload handler. Uh, the merger attack surface is the offload handler. So the question is how to find the handler table. Uh, the answer is that you can 
first find the string from the string table. Uh, that is this string, uh, non data offload, and then check the reference of the string to find the function name and uh, find the fun function named non uh, data handler. Uh, you can see this. Uh, this is a big function. Actually, it's a it's a big loop, and uh, fetch the items in the handler table, and uh, then call the functions to do the job. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, major attack surface. You can find the table here, and find the functions. Uh, this is a sample function. One of the functions looks like this. The most important thing is to find the data point. If you send the data. Uh, if you want to attack the W line, you first send the data. So how to find the data data, data flow? Uh, this is the entry, the one of the handler. You can see here, this is a data point. Uh all case five B, five A, five line, five eight. This is the data point. So you find this function and find the data point and analyze the uh, function and the process source of the uh uh, data point, then you know how what uh, is the function doing and handle vulnerabilities. Okay, uh, I think this is the most important slide in this, this talk. You can find the function and find the data and handle vulnerability that you want. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, start the exploitation. Uh, this is a load map. Uh, we are here. We can send out uh, some signals using the Wi-Fi dongle. Or something else. Uh, we are here. We can send out the signals, Wi-Fi signals, and we are going to compromise the WLAN, and uh, then we are escape into modern, and uh, finally uh, we are into the Linux kernel. Okay, to compromise the for for Linux kernel. Okay, so before we go, let's check the uh, medication status. Of WM to set up an exploitation strategy. Okay. From the medication table, you can see that there are lots of medications. Uh, for example, the heap, heap have ASL. The address of the heap is not fixed. And the heap have protection, heap cookie. So uh, the overflow on the heap is very difficult to exploit. And also, there are DEP, uh, you are unable to. Uh, jump into the data segment. Uh, also, you are unable to write to the code segment directly. If you want to do, to do so, you have to change the uh, memory attribution. Uh, okay. Also, there are frame limit, frame limit to protect the SP, the frame key to protect take the return address. Uh, so, uh, if you want to use some Technique like uh, ROP, ROP, uh, this doesn't work because the protection here. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are very lucky. The code ASL is not in enabled, so the code address is fixed, and the CFI is not enabled. So, if we, uh, although we cannot use ROP, we can use something called the uh, FOP, function oriented programming. That is, um, in the uh, gadget of the ROP, all the gadget is a uh, uh, function call, not a return call. Uh, return is a function call, that is a function oriented programming. Okay? And uh, we are also very lucky the issue we found is in the global data area. That is, here there is also low ASL. So the address of the data is also fixed. Okay? We know the address of the data, the what around the, the data address. Okay. Let's see the detail of the vulnerability. Uh, it's a CVE 2019 10540. Okay. This issue has already been announced in the Android and the Qualcomm August security briefing and uh, has been patched. So if you are interested in about the detailed information of the vulnerability, please check the security briefing in August 29. Okay. Uh, this issue has been mm, fixed already. Uh, uh, this issue in one of the offload uh, handler. Uh, you, you remember this table, the offload table. There are lots of functions. 
uh, called the uh, offload handler. One of the handler have a problem, and uh, it's a pre-auth friend handler. <coughs> uh, handler the OAT. Uh, what is pre-auth? Uh, pre-auth means you don't have to connect to a specified access point. You don't have to connect to connect to a host host port. You just turn on the Wi-Fi. The then the uh, phone is vulnerable. Okay, it's a pre-auth vulnerability. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, vulnerability code. I have transfer translated it into the C code. Uh, it's a straightforward. You can see this loop and. Uh, uh, this low check about the length and uh, we are copy as much of data into the uh, destination. Uh, we are copy copy. It's a uh, uh, endless loop if you have enough for data. Okay. This is the vulnerability. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's check uh, the data around the overflow address. You can see it will overflow from here global buffer and uh, uh if you want to into a copy all case 44 data into each, each item from here the group of buffer into here you can see 44 bytes of data 44 44 uh, it's a, it's a loop okay you know this is a global buffer in the global static area so the address we you already know because there is no SLR, the meditation table, you, you remember? There is no SLR, so we know the address of the uh, uh, overflow data. So it's very convenient for us to exploit. Okay. We can analyze the uh, data around the overflow address. We can analyze the data here. And uh, uh, quickly, we can find out the after set C is a very useful data. It's a very useful function, uh, data point, point to, uh, uh, something we can, uh, leverage to do some useful job. We call it the smart point. Using the vulnerability, we can overwrite this smart point, overwrite, overwrite the content of this point. Okay. See how we use the smart point. We can send out a package and, uh, uh goes into this, this, Code flow to use the override at data. You can see this is a smart point. We override so we can we can change it to our destination we are interested in. And uh, if we call into this code flow, finally we will override these two bytes. Uh, actually, the three bytes C, D, and the fourteen. We will override these three bytes. Okay. Let's see the detail. We overwrite the smart point uh, using the vulnerability, and it will uh, have two tests. The first test is to test our destination equal to one, and the second test is to test the smart point plus six equal to the MAC address of the sender. And finally, if the two tests pass, it will write to the uh, three bytes using the data from the OTA packet. Uh, this is uh, the data we control and send. And the MAC address is also we control and send. So the only constraint is that if we pa bypass this, this, this check, we can write arbitrary code to the destination we are interested in. So we can Overwrite something like a function point, the data point, or other things we are interested in to do the job. Okay. So we have a, a global write write the primitive. So we can write to anywhere we want if we can bypass this check. Okay. So for example, uh, we overwrite the smart point to this address x x x and uh, the lowest bit is one, so we can bypass the check here. Uh, we can we can bypass the check here, okay. And uh, then we can write to the offset C, uh, uh, fifty six seven eight. You can see here. We can write a C and a D, 
That is the uh, six, uh, five, six, seven, eight. We can write it to here. We can use. We call it the primitive global right with constituents. Constituent. Okay. You can write it to anywhere if the noise bit is one set up. Uh, so, uh, meaningful address or data is always four bytes. So, how to write four bytes? The answer is quite simple. We just uh, use the write trace. The first time on the no two bytes, you know, the five, six, seven, eight, and uh, the sixth time we move, move the small point of, uh, forward offset by two, and uh, this one, this bit is, this bit is still or one, we can write one, two, three, four, then that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, <coughs> uh, that is four bytes, and uh, there is still another problem. You see, w you want to write to here, mm, five, s six, and uh, uh, the problem is this bit is not, not uh, equal to one. So how to solve this problem? You can set uh, 30 up, and uh, if this is one, then we can use the global write to modify this 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 bit. Okay, we can set up set up it to one. Then we can write to the target. So this is the method that we use. So for this complex figure, actually we want to control the PC and Arduino. Ah, uh, Arduino. We have uh, uh, eight bytes. The first four bytes is the PC and. Uh, uh, second is Arduino, but <coughs> we search up from on the memory and find this place that we can write about and read about by our remote package. Okay, then you see there are a lot of one, lot of one. We can move move the smart point forward, move on, move on, more, and then we can overwrite the target PC and the Arduino. Okay. So we have control the PC and other. Uh, we can, mm, we can then run some FOP to do some complex job, such as to run into the uh, FOP and uh, mapping the RWX page. This is to map some page to uh, modify the code segment. Uh, for example, uh, this is a t code segment B zero zero and. Uh, uh, Originally, my from from uh, nine three six. Uh, we wanted to want to write the code segment, so we using the FOP to uh, map it to four two four two. Uh, using this uh, for FOP, so now we can uh, write to the code segment, and uh, we can write to we have a arbitrary write, so we can copy copy our shell code into the into the code space and uh, trigger it. You can see we copy the shell code. The shell code is originally in the data package, so we copy the data package data into the destination that is 4242. Then we trigger this function. Okay. So now we have running our arbitrary code in the WLAN. Actually, we have now in the WLAN. Okay, we are going to the modern. Hmm. Uh, the WLAN in the different uh, process in the base band is modern. Okay. You can see the kernel is the QURT OS, and uh, the WLAN and the modern is the uh, process in the running in the user space. So, how to get into the WLAN? Uh, uh, into the modern from the WLAN. There are dangerous actions such as modify the code segment uh, and write uh, modern data or call complex functions, uh, but uh, uh, all illegal. You, if you call, uh, if you do these dangerous actions, the baseband subsystem will crash. Okay, but you remember we can map memory. So how about we map the modern memory directly into the WLAN? Okay. Just like this, we map the modern um, memory from on the WLAN. Okay, it's a memory map. Okay. We just map the physical memory into the WLAN virtual address, and then we can modify the memory content. Okay. 
So you can modify the code of the modem. So we are control the modem. Okay. So the last step is to escape him from the modem into the Linux kernel. Okay. This is the load map we are going to do. Okay. There are a lot of attack surfaces. So if you are interested, you can read the value paper for detailed information. Okay. Uh, this is the issue. Uh, the 3E uh, 2019 and 10538, which has already been fixed in the August Android security bulletin, uh, you can see there is a check from the data pa pack coming from the modern. Okay. Uh, what's this doing? Uh, actually, it's about the memory management of Qualcomm multiprocessor. Uh, it's a very big topic, uh, in fact, uh, about, the, about the memory management. So it's a simplified figure. Uh, there are two things you need to know. The first thing is the, uh, the Linux master mode. That means the whole system, uh, the memory of the whole system is management by the Linux kernel. Uh, so the peripheral such as um, Windows, modern WLAN or, or Bluetooth, other, other peripheral subsystems, the mem memory is uh, all management by the, by, the, by the Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel will uh, use the SMMU to or protect the uh, memory. For example, if the modern owns, owns this, this memory, uh, every time, and um, other, other peripheral such as we not visit this uh, DRAM. The SMMU will check the uh, permission and uh, uh, find out that uh, the Windows data has this, this permission and then the whole system is down. So this is the two things you uh, remember is the Linux, uh, Linux master mode and SMMU to protect the uh, memory. So the problem is here uh, in fact, uh, this is a uh, mystery lo logic. Generally, Linux will decide the address and the size to uh, assign to other peripheral sub subsystem. But here, you can see the address and the size are determined by the modern. Uh, uh, we don't know why, but uh, if the modern send out the address to Linux, then Linux will use this address directly and use the SAS directory. So uh, if we insert the address to the code address of Linux, so the address will be, uh, the, so the address will be mapped into modern and then modern can modify the code address of, of the Linux kernel. And that is the issue, okay. So now we are actually in the, in the Linux kernel. So we are going to talk about how to send out the payload. Uh, actually, uh, before we are using the Scapy and uh, Wi-Fi dongle, but it's not not very stable. So finally, we are using a Pixel 2 to send out the pay payload, and uh, using a Pixel 2 to attack the Pixel 2 XL. So you can see the Pixel 2 send out uh, Wi-Fi payload, and uh, then Pixel 2 XL. We have received the payload and uh, been uh, compromised. Okay, this is the whole roadmap. We are using Pix2 send out this, and uh, finally, we from modern into the Linux kernel. Okay, into WLAN, into modern, and into Linux kernel. Okay. Uh, let's uh, use um, The demo is here. Uh, can, can you see? Okay. Uh, uh, this is on the left uh, is the pixel, pixel two. Uh, it is, it is send, sending out a, a package. Send on the pay payload to attack the, the left is the pixel 2 XL. Okay, you can see it's a version of the system. 
Okay. So the whole process in the, about three minutes. You can see. Uh, now we are we are in the shell and uh, the <coughs> this is uh, S E Linux is enforcing. So we have uh, no permission for, and to do the uh, dangerous things such as D message. Okay. So it is still sending out payload payload and uh, let's let's speed up. Speed up. Speed up. So the S E Linux is still enforcing, you know. Enforcing. So the Pixel 2 is still sending out payload. Okay. It's uh, it's about three minutes. Okay. Okay. That is probably done. Okay. Can I see. I wait for about one minute. And you can see finally we have get into the Linux kernel and uh, disable the SC Linux. So uh, now okay, you can read the D message. So actually we are running arbitrary code in the Linux kernel from the mo remote WLAM. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Uh, So time is up, and uh, um, to note this, these issues have already been fixed uh, in the August bulletin and the pack. Uh, you can see the detailed information here. And today we talk about how to remotely into into the kernel from the OTA package uh, into WLAN and the modern the four four chain and the vulnerability and the exploitations and the baseband subsystem. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much. Okay.